What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beast Music Business Podcast. We are your host, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I'm Juggernaut. I'm Mike Trauma D. And we together form the ultimate duo, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. If this is your first time here, welcome. Every week we get together and we talk about the topics in the music business. And we try to help artists navigate this crazy music business and give them resources and tips to save them time, energy, and money. So today, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about our music streaming companies ripping off the artists. Hmm. Yeah. I think this is like a recurring theme for us. Are they ripping off the artists, right? So our music streaming companies ripping off the artists. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to give you some tips and some ways that you can basically earn the most for your art. Because there's ways that we can navigate this this uh the streaming companies and what they're doing to artists. It's a little crazy, but we're gonna get into this. So you and I were talking off camera before we got to this thing, and there's this clip that's running around on TikTok of the artist uh St. John. He said he wrote some records for Usher, or he wrote a record for Usher that did a lot of streams. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna play the clip. I don't I don't I don't want I don't want people to think that um we're making this thing up, but this this clip is basically gonna tell us everything that you need to know about how this model is kind of is broken. Wrote a record for Usher. The song came out at the time the song streamed 70 million. That's a lot. That's not 70 million dollars. And here's the mathematics: 70 million streams. I own 25% of the songs. And it's three thousand dollars per million stream. It's three thousand times 70. So two hundred and ten thousand dollars, right? It's math. And the numbers gotta make sense. I'm waiting on a song for two years. Based on the royalty rate that Spotify pays the publishers. There's two types of money in records. It's publishing money, that's writing, and then it's performance money. It wasn't my I voice. So I'm just on the publishing side. So that's two hundred and ten thousand dollars at that song made had to be bust down my take on that 210 was 1500 dollars and i if i'd have put that song out myself and only had three million streams i'd have made ten thousand i said i'm done i washed my hands i was like this is dumb you know how hard it is to get these songs on these people who put it out on their own time the artists who have their own vision for it for your livelihood to be dependent on somebody else that you don't control or influence impact or have a relationship with yeah. and it's not even your worth you're not even getting paid your weight in salt i wrote a <laughs> He said a lot. Wow. He said, wow. He, said a, he said he said a whole lot. So let's let's really let's really dissect that and, and and for people who may not understand what he's talking about, what happened, how did he only get fifteen hundred? He signed a bad deal. Let's kind of let's kind of break this down for the folks who may not really understand. You know. What is the real dynamic and what happened here? And <laughs> like, like it's enough to make your head spin, bro. Man, this is that's a shame. You know, the it, 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 you know, because of the royalty rate. You know, the royalty rate is just so damn low. Yeah, pretty much. And because the royalty rate is so low with these streaming companies, uh, you can actually stream millions, millions. And still get crumbs, and this—that's that's what's happening with him. Like he—he's getting crumbs for being part of a record that streamed millions. Like, <laughs> if, and if this is your only source of income, right? And let's say that he's a songwriter, and that's exactly what he's basically trying to say in this in this clip, is that he's only the songwriter. He didn't share in a quote unquote a recorded performance. Right, because he's not the performer. Because he's not the performer. So right. And that, that removes him from, from, that. The, from the performance revenue side that comes from the distributor. Right? So he, But he helped to write the song. Right? And then what that, so what happens, what folks have to realize is when you write these songs, right, and now it's going to be released by a major artist, they're going to send you your contract, you're going to get your contract, you're basically going to turn yourself into a work for hire. Yeah. Once you turn yourself into a work for hire, you basically are relinquishing any rights to the master, any rights to the copyright. Like this is the game, folks. Like this is what it is. So he's relegated himself to only the publishing portion of the situation, and this is why it's it's paying so small. It's because again, it's only the publishing portion of it, and it's only for streaming. So it's not like he got seventy million uh, plays on radio. That's going to be a different type of royalty, right? As opposed to 
the royalty that's going to be coming from the streaming company. It's totally different. So, you know, a hit on the streaming platforms is not the same as a radio hit. A radio hit right. that does crazy stuff like that, you're going to get paid. A, a streaming hit at these but rates. The, but you know, but you and I know radio to, to, to get radio with hits, man. That, like that's that 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 door uh, to get into on something on the radio was like. It's closing. Keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. You forget about it. You know, yeah. like like that's nearly impossible without a machine. You know, a major machine behind you. You know, but it's a it's a it's really a it's really a bad situation when you look at it and when you think about it in terms of, you know, what may be the situation going on with him. Um, as as I was as I would say, it's it's like. He caught the epiphany, and I'm glad he caught it early. And he's like, the other portion of it is he said to himself, it's like, okay, I'm out here running around, writing, my, giving my music to these mm -hmm. other artists. Right. And, you know, I don't have control over the vision. I don't have a control over when it comes out. I don't have to say so in any of those things. So he said, I'm just better off just putting the music out myself and betting on myself. Well, you know, Jug, man, it takes it takes a lot, man, to to, to get on these projects. Let's Let's be for real. Yeah. To, to, to get your song placed, it takes a lot. And, uh, and and the funny thing is, it's not, most of the time, it's not even on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could do everything you're supposed to do. But if the artist, if the artist ain't in a good mood, if if you don't, if, if you know, the manager or, or the other artists don't connect properly to, 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 to meet and greet with you, like, there's just so many things that, that, that have to line up in order for your product to get placed. You know, the person who's shopping your music, if the artist don't like that person, if the artist just broke up on the wrong side of the day and he ain't trying to hear no music, if he heard your music but he just in a different mood, like, there's just way too many factors for artists to pick out a record, you know, and you mix that in conjunction with the things that you have to do before you even get to the artist. It just takes a lot. It, it, it takes a lot and it's not in your hand. And for you to, for you to have your future based you know, on that, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a lose situation, you know, for you to, for, if you got a family to feed and you're basing your income on another person, you're basing your income on, um, you know, if an artist is going to pick up your record, you know, I know we all like to get out there and hustle and bustle and, you know, I'm not no, no, no dream killer, no goal killer, but let's be for real. It, it takes a lot in order to get these records placed. And then you finally go through all of that, get your record placed, and then they turn around and get crumbs like that. Yeah, wait two years for that. Oh my God! And 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 and, and then funny thing is, that was a hit record. <laughs> like that was a big record. <laughs> like, Seventy you know, million streams is a big. It's, it's a lot of streams. You know, like come on. And I think I think the artists look. Let's put it like this. There's nothing we can do when in regards to what the streaming companies are paying out. Like it's their platform. Right. They're gonna do whatever they're gonna do. I mean, we can we can, you know, file lawsuits and we can do all of this stuff. Yeah, whatever. But it comes down to this, you know, when it's your platform, you do what you want. So these streaming these streaming services, this is their platforms. They're gonna do what they want. So for you to know that, you have to figure out a way, okay. If that's what the situation is, how can I find other ways to compensate for this? And that's what you have to do. I think I think one of the first things you have to do is tell yourself, look, I can't just be in one category. You know, I can't just be an artist. I can't just just be a writer. I, I, I can't just be a producer. You can't stick to one category. You got to wear multiple hats in order to so that you could you could participate in all of the different areas of income. If you stick to one thing, you're dead in the water. I don't think people realize that when they're doing music, that you you always are going to be multifaceted once you get into music. Like for a person that gets into it, especially if you're independent and you're doing it yourself, you know. A lot of artists that I know right now, they know how to record themselves. A lot of artists know how to do this. A lot of artists know how to, um, you know, make beats. A lot, a lot of artists are learning how to do, like you said, 
um, different things. And like you said, you can't just relegate yourself to just being a songwriter or just being a, a producer yeah. or just being, you can't do that anymore. Like this, this, there's a, there's an ecosystem out here of people that are doing multiple different things and they're, and they're using, they're leveraging those things in order to make sure that they can eat. So I, I would want us to kind of pivot and I want us to talk about the things that artists and producers need to do in order to maximize the earnings for their art. The, well, the, the first thing, the first thing the artist needs to do is to realize that they're just not an artist alone. They got to stop naming themselves as, as just an artist. You know, when you, when you get these contracts, um, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to rename what you're being classified as, especially producers, you yeah. know, uh, especially producers. You can't just be labeled just a producer. You have to look at these contracts and say, you know what? I need the wording to cha be changed on this. You know, I need the wording to, to, to show that, you know, I'm an artist as well, you know, because if you don't have that verbiage in your contract, then you're going to be only entitled to, to, to a certain share and you're kind of, you're going to be, you're going to be held to that. You play, there's only certain deals you're going to be able to make based on that. It's so, funny. It's funny that you said that because I remember us specifically going through a negotiation for something, and we had to uh, tell our attorney to 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 change his vantage point in terms of how we were being dealt with. Right? We said, "Hey, listen, we don't want the we don't want the the the, the situ the standard right, which is the standard stuff for producers." Right, we're, now, we're we're now coming in as part of label owners. We're coming in as people who are owning part of the master. Right, and these are the things that we're demanding. We're demanding the feature credit. We're demanding the artist credit on top of being the producer and right. the songwriters. So it's like you have to start thinking in those kind of in that kind of degree because you, like you said, the, the business relegates you to one thing. Right, and your contracts will reflect that, like you said, and. Yeah. Going, go, going, going into a, a negotiation as a producer is disrespectful. To be honest with you, those those deals aren't those deals are like a are, are bad deals. Those deals, those deals are like standard bad deals. Standard bad deals, and when you when you do you're in the negotiation with those deals, they, 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 there's no respect for you. Let's let's be for real. You know the you know the 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 attorneys. Look at it a certain way. They treat you a certain way. They talk to you a certain way because you're the producer. And there's this thing going around where producers are considered a dime a dozen, and they treat it a certain way. But you have to have a certain respect for you and respect for your craft. You have to know your value. So when you're in those situations, you got to turn it around and say, you know what? I'm not just a producer, and I'm not not going to be just labeled as a producer. I'm a business owner. So that when so you get to change these contracts like as we're doing a deal, uh, you know, we're, we're a business and we're going to meet in the middle and do this deal, you know, 50, 50, uh, you know, I'm a partner in this deal. You know, you're not doing me a favor. You're not, you're not giving me crumbs because I'm contributing half of this entire project. So you have to, you, <laughs> you, 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 you got so you, you got to, people don't, you have to reprogram yourself. You, you have, you have created half of a recording master right so why so why are you you just taking anything they give you and why are you taking these these standard regular producer deals that have been around for decades yeah can't do it it doesn't, ref, it, it doesn't reflect who you are because as a, as a producer you know you, you have a business and, you, and you're doing a whole bunch of other things. You're re you're recording. You're you're a director now. You're doing. You're, there's so much things that you're doing. You're not just a producer, you know. Uh, on top of that, <laughs> you know, again, these producer deals are old. Mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't stand the test of time. Technology has changed. Yeah. So those things are outdated. So all of these producer agreements that you get, or, or you know. I, I see these these standard producer agreements that they're giving out online for free. That's not gonna that's not gonna cut it. That alone. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. So, especially especially because you have a lot of records that don't even go to radio. Right. All right. That's right. been that's been removed, right? For a lot of folks. Some folks are just, you know, focusing straight online. 
and you don't and, need to go to radio to be successful. And right, you don't need to go to radio. And and but remember, what's happening is that now you're relegated to the the lowest portion of the royalty pool, right? Because now we have everything streaming. Streaming is the lowest situation. So if you're going to be removed from from radio, and we have to be relegated to this this type of royalty stream. You have to negotiate more and you have to start thinking of yourself, like you said, as a business, as not just a producer, you're a content creator. You're also making masters. You, you, this is These are sound recording masters that you're making. Uh, so you are you have to share in that revenue. You can no longer just relegate yourself to the publishing side and not getting any portion of the master recording rights. You can't do that anymore. And a lot of a lot of people balk when you do that. When we did that, they was like, "What? You want part of the master? Yeah, yeah." And you have to come back to us after X amount of years, and you have to renegotiate that again. Yeah, right. Like, like we're we're basically licensing the portion of the master for a certain amount of time, and we, we're no longer in that situation. And we were just saying, "Hey, we'll work for hire, take the master recording, exploit it, and leave us with nothing." Yeah, like, that's what that's what artists artists and producers have to start thinking about. Like, listen, and then you have a lot of artists online, and they're talking about, oh, I don't want to share the master recording. Like, hey, you're part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, like you're part of the problem. You want to work on an antiquated model, and you and you don't want to give the respect, like you said, to the producers and the songwriters who help to contribute to that said master. I mean, it's disgusting, man. It really is. You know the way the way some of these artists are behaving, and they didn't look at producers. And the only way that's going to change is producers have you know some more self respect for themselves and their craft. I don't think they even know, like like that. The reality of it is that you don't even know, like if until someone tells you, hey, you know, this is the whole reason why we decided to do the path that we're going on right now. This is the whole reason why we're releasing the songwriters registration guide. This is the whole reason why we're doing that, so you can start to think of yourself as a business. Like, you know, like, yeah, we're, we're creators. Yeah, you know, we're creative. Yeah, man, like, this is what we do. But we're you're a business. Once you start to make songs that have to get exploited and get royalties and paid, you are a business. And you have to start thinking of the music that you create as catalog. It is part of a, it's, it's an asset class. I don't think people really realize that you have to start to really reprogram and say, hey, it's just a song. No, it's an asset class that people are out here acquiring. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen five years down the line when some new emerging technology pops up and starts and starts giving ten dollars every time it's played. Right. <laughs> like you don't know. You don't it's, know. And don't then what know. happens? You don't. And you don't own any of it. And they're giving out ten, twenty dollars every time it's played. What happened? What happens then? It's coming, you know. And I think people don't realize that with the advent of blockchain and Web three point oh. Where now they'll start to get the consumer paid for consuming, right? Like that's right. the next model. So what do you think will happen with those royalty rates? Well, you have to pay the consumer and have to pay the copyright on. Like people have to really people have to really think about this thing, you know, further down the line. And I think that's where we kind of get caught at caught up as the people, especially who are into, you know, quote unquote black music and so forth and so on. We're not part of the design of the technology, right? Right. That's a, that's, that's a whole deeper. That's a whole other conversation. So yeah. we're not in, we're not in line with that. So because we're yeah. not in line with that, we don't know what's coming. Yeah, we're the last. We're the last to know. And by the time we find out, you know, we're we're all the consumer, right? You know, they they make this 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 growing technology, and they make it in a way that. They make it so fast and they make it in a way where we're the ones that kind of sheep in it, you know? <laughs> and then you're stuck and then we're complaining about the rates. You didn't yeah. create the technology. We, you didn't contribute agree. to the technology. So how can you have a say so in the rate? And then you sold your rights away. You sold all your masters, sold all your master recordings. So like we said before. Your position. The first thing is just knowing your position. And, and changing uh, the verbiage in your classification, you know, you're not just a writer, you're, you're not just a producer. Um, you got to change though the, the, that wording. Even when you even when you sign up for these streaming platforms, don't just put artists. You may want to put business owner or or entrepreneur or, or or something else, but don't just limit it. Or even uh, a, a nice one I like is a uh, 
media media company you know that's, you that's real because music goes everywhere right so you don't want to just say artists even when you know when you sign up for a lot of these uh a company like these these services and they have the little drop down of what do you want to be classified under maybe don't just put artists you know maybe you need to think about something a little wide uh wide range because you're going to be delivering a, more content than just music you're delivering videos you're, de you're delivering uh, uh other products there's just so much things and you know we're limiting ourselves when you just say artists or producer so that's I think that's number one you know changing the verbiage and making sure that you're labeling yourself correctly so you can participate in all of the, the different uh, uh, pieces of income when it comes to that I think I think artists have to definitely pay attention to that pay attention that it's it's much much more than just creating songs it's more than that. It's it's more. It's so much more than that. Like if everybody, everything that goes behind these this, these songs and and where they go and how these things are monetized and how they're exploited, you have to start thinking in that kind of fashion. You have to think like how Hypnosis Song Fund is thinking or how um, Black Rock and these guys are thinking when they're going around and they're purchasing these songs. They have already told us, and this is this is clear and it's documented. The folks that are out here acquiring catalogs. I've already told you that there are there are predict predictors in music. They can predict what songs are going to be earning in X amount of time in years. So if you're buying a Mariah Carey song, all I want for Christmas is going to generate X amount of dollars every single year, and that's only based on the current model, not based on the model that might be coming in the next five six years. So these guys have already positioned themselves to make sure that they are they are in bed with that earning for perpetuity so and i think that's not so i think that's number two then i think that's number two that we have to change uh our thinking in, in way of it's like you said it's an it's an asset yes you know? it's, a, it's an asset class it's an asset and people class. have to start thinking that music and music is an asset class music isn't just you know hey i'm having a good time this is an asset class people are out here literally trying to acquire copyrights and masters because they're treating it as if it's real estate people and i think you and i talked about this in the last podcast it's like again it's they're treating it as an asset class when we did our uh, one of our last negotiations you know we we told our attorney to, to make the changes the way we needed the changes to be made and then he made a comment and i don't know if he had caught that and he was like yeah you know the banks like to like to look at it different when you say that you have these type of intellectual property assets hmm so if you wanted to borrow against it and do things like that, your, your masters become assets that you can yep. leverage for finance. Yep. But did you know that? No, people didn't know that until people don't know that until now you have to go out and make this deal with some third party company. And they're doing the same thing. They're leveraging the assets. They're taking, they're taking the royalty streams from the assets. They're showing the banks that, hey, this is the revenue stream. Ooh. And then they can go out and they can, they can go get Ooh. loans and stuff against mm. the against the revenue this is an asset class so folks have to really start to really understand that what's going on with this situation Damn. so when people call us and they say hey how come you're not doing exclusive because we're not letting go of our masters we're not get, we're not giving away our assets we have thousands of masters why would i give them away i'm not giving them away anymore the record companies did that to us already we use the record companies to basically raise our profile yep our profile is raised we're no longer giving away our assets. Sorry, Doug, Doug. I remember. I remember we were uh, doing a deal, and I was speaking with. I'm not going to say uh, the guy's name. I don't, I don't think you were there though. But um, we were doing a, a a. It was it was a deal after Loud Records with another emerging uh, company that was coming up, and um, you know we were one of the things that was up for negotiation was the master and one thing that was said that kind of always rang in my head the 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 executive said well why do i want to give that up or relinquish that um that's our that's that's what's bringing you know Trying to find the word, right word, but that's what that's that's the brand. 
that's what's giving the the, the brand, uh, um, you know, their wealth. That's what's giving the brand, you know, uh, everything. You know, that's how they're making other deals based on all the masters that they're acquiring. Yeah. So if a record label has a bunch of masters, that means they're getting certain much, you know, income a year. They can take that and go get another deal. They can get that and invest it and get other loans and all these other things that's going on that we are not privy to. It's it's almost like 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 sh you know shares and stocks like like it's it's, it's kind of like that game. And if you're giving away your masters, you're giving away your leverage. You know you're you're giving up the value. You know your brand is only as a record label. Your brand is only as strong as the masters you own. That's real. So if you're if you're a record company and you don't own the masters. Your record company is useless. Like you cannot, you cannot go to a major label and try and get this, try and get that. For what? Why would they want to do business with you? You gotta, you gotta, you have to, you have to own the master to have value for your company. And then that's why they come to you and say, okay, we we want to do business with you. We want a piece of your master. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to really start thinking about how important. Uh, uh, the master recording is and the value. And then also we have to start thinking about different ways to exploit it, right? The exploitation just isn't through the streaming platforms, right? There's Everybody is doing sync right now. A lot of people are doing sync. A lot of people are doing uh, a lot of content. There's, there's so much content being created. There's so much, but there's so much things you can do with it. Like, think about it. If you own it, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can lease, you can lease the instrumental to this person for, for X amount of time. You can lease to that person for X amount of time. You can put it on this show, that movie, that talk show. That podcast. Yo. This piece is this, this, this real. Different pieces coming in. Yeah. For one record. For one record. So if you're doing this with about 20, 100, 1,000 records all, over, all around the globe. Now you're talking. Now you're creating value. But that's the point. That's the point of the situation is that you'll have some folks saying, hey, what's the point of your master if you don't know how to exploit it? That's like, another topic. That's another topic. <laughs> you have topic. to you have to start to learn how to exploit it. But, once... but, but, but own the master first. Right. Own the master first. You, I mean, we, we can't even talk about you exploiting the master if you don't even own it. It's a dead conversation. A dead conversation. But basically, some folks will say, hey, you need to get a deal so that you can learn how to exploit, exploit it. So you have to be exploited first so that you can learn how to exploit your own music. Does that make? I guess that makes sense for a lot of folks. Like, hey, I need to go get a record deal, learn learn how to, learn how to get raped, right? You know what? No. Get all, get, all the, get all of the channels, right? And basically what they're going to do is like, what no one wants to talk about is this. They don't want to talk about the finite well of music. I mean, I say the finite well. It's basically you have periods where you're hot and periods where you're cold. Right. The record company wants you when you're at your hottest, which is pr pretty much when you're in your youth, when you're riding all of that fire. That doesn't go on indefinitely. People have to realize that that doesn't go on indefinitely. Everybody has you know peaks and value valleys. The best artists, they have periods where they wrote the best music. If you're talking about off the wall thriller. And then after that, it kind of goes right. Some of it may not be as good as the last of them. So, so right. you have to you have to realize that you're not dealing with an infinite well of of songwriting and creativity, and you have to make sure that you're not giving all of your best creations away. And then when it's time for you to really learn how to exploit it, the ones that you got aren't as good as the ones that you gave away. And, and, and you know what, Jack, man, the funny thing is, sometimes the music is just as good. You know, sometimes, you know, but it's just that, you know, timing, because there's, there's so many other factors that, that it takes for a record to become a hit or, or used, That's right. you know, you know, the way society is going and what's going on in the news could affect the way your record comes out. The rollout could affect the record. If it's a rainy day, remember when, um, when, when it was, uh, just retail stores, when, when an album drops, 
If it if it rained on that day, bad weather, snowstorm. Yeah. <laughs> if they couldn't get to the store, you couldn't get you couldn't sell nothing. Yeah. If a national uh, disaster happened, you know, a tragedy happened on on that Tuesday, it was a wrap. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You know, so yeah, man, like I I I, I agree with everything you're saying. And we have to start looking at um the masters, looking at your craft. We gotta look at it as assets. And the only way you're able to do that is if you're changing the way you think about who you are. And you know, you're a business. Music. Yep. Yeah. You can't even you can't even go in that direction and start thinking that on, on, until you do the first step, which changing, you know, uh uh who what your labels, you All know. Right. Changing that classification in your mind, changing, changing your mindset. Your mind. You gotta like say, that. you know what? I'm a I'm a business, so I'm gonna handle my contracts as a business. Now that I got that, okay. Now I gotta think about, okay, how am I positioning myself in this business? You know, am I just going to make beats, or I'm just gonna write records and send them out, or am I gonna look at it as, okay, every record that I'm putting together is a master recording that is an asset that I can use as leverage. Uh, to create other deals, other opportunities, uh, to 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 get loans, you know, uh, a whole lot of different things. So I have to think in that way. And in order for that to to, to happen, you have to retain the masters. You have to retain at least a portion of it. Right. So so uh, when you're doing these deals, you got to think on that level. Um. So that, that's 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 number two. And I think I think the other the other thing also is that the third thing is really it's like once we start to exploit your masters, and once you start to kind of get out there and get your music out there, start realizing that your music can drive the sale of other things. Yeah. Yep. Start thinking like the Coca Cola brand. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we yeah yeah we sell we sell Coca Cola. But you're going to, that ad, you're going to hear music, you're going to see video, you're going to see a whole bunch of things that help to create the experience for people to consume something. And you have to realize that your music is the bedrock to that stuff. So you, yeah. you, have, to, you have to start to really thinking, out, thinking about how music is consumed and then how music is used to sell everything. Think about it like this. Is, is the iPhone... Is the iPhone the product selling Apple Music, or is Apple Music the product selling the iPhone? iPhone. You know, and that's how you have to think about it. You know, if you're creating music, you know, what else do you have to offer? You know, what are you? Okay, you have this music. The music goes everywhere. Your music is like a like an ad, and and I've, I've said this on multiple podcasts. Your music is like an ad. It, it, it advertises your brand. So, if you have another product in place, whether it's you know a clothing company, makeup company, uh, uh, you know alcohol beverages, regular beverages, water, food catering company, whatever services, wh whatever you have, you know whatever you have, your music should be able to be used to promote those things. As you're promoting your brand, your brand, your brand, every time your music goes all over, it's promoting your brand. When we look up your brand, we should be able to see all of these things. Oh, they got a shirt. Oh, they got this. Oh, they got that. Right. When I go to your website, I should see all of those things. And that is how you, you subscribe to the different areas of income. You don't limit yourself to just this small change that's given to us by the streaming companies. Now you're participating in merch. You're participating in services. You're participating in, in just a whole area of things. And again, you cannot do that if you're limiting yourself to just being a producer. If you're categorizing yourself as just being a producer, you don't you lose out on all of those things. Everything. So that is the, <laughs> that is that's why. You know, I said, number one, you got to change your classification because if you could change your classification, you start op opening yourself to all of those, those, those areas. 
it, and you have to start thinking outside that box. Like it's a box that they want to relegate you into. Yeah. Like that's really the reality of the situation. Is that I mean, if and if you're relegated to that box, there's no longevity. I mean, look, you gotta think about you know all of these uh, commercials that have been using our music for decades. You know, using hip hop in our commercials. You know, like from from the Kentucky Fried Chickens <laughs> to 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 advertising the sports. You know, to you know, video games to everything. Like they they they, they use music and everything. You and know, the joke, so, and the, the joke is is that they they use our music to promote their things, but we don't use our own music to promote our things. Exactly. Yeah, and we don't funny. use our own music to promote our own products. And they do it in our face. It's so obvious. And, yeah. and sometimes it feels it feels a way, like oh, you have this company, you have this brand, you're advertising this product, and then you go and get a hip hop record. To, to 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 put on it yeah and we're not even thinking like that we don't even think to we don't even think to 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 use our music to 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 really promote the things that we could be selling like and or we just we just stop ourselves like right it might just be hey I, i'm i'm an artist i'm going to just i'm just going to sell merch i'm not going to sell nothing else and why like why stop there yeah, I can't say like why why stop there. It's like you you know as an artist, it's like your music can be used to sell so many things, and if you can sell if your music can be used to sell other things for other people, like you should be thinking that on that same on that same um, wavelength. And I think, Joe, like you also limit, you know, your your potential. You limit your, you limit your income. Like for example, because a lot of these things are on different platforms, right? Because we don't own a lot of this stuff, right? So even if you say, well, I'm just going to do this and that, what happens when the owners of the platform or you say something or do something that they don't like and they pull that plug where you can't stream your music? You know, do you have a, a, a website set up so that fans can still reach you? What happens if you say something on on, on, on IG, Facebook or, or Twitter or any of these companies? What happens if you say something that the owners don't like and they say, you know what, we're going to ban you? Now you no longer have access to, 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 to millions of people. What are you going to do then? Do you have your website set up? Do you have the, your relationship set up with, with the um, direct to consumer? Do you have emails? Do you have any of these things so people could contact you directly to get your product? You can't do that if you just classify yourself as just a producer alone. You can't do that if you just classify yourself as a, as a, as a writer alone. You've got to think business. And these things can happen. It actually has happened to some artists. They're not paying attention. They don't think it can happen to themselves. They don't think that in a, in a in a in a situation where something is going on and you can tweet something or say something out of pocket, you know, just based off of what's going on off an emotion. Like yeah. They don't realize that they can be relegated to the sideline by any of these platforms in a heartbeat. You see it didn't happen. Yeah. So so you know you can't just stick to just one thing. You can't stick to just being a writer. You can't stick to just being a producer. You can't stick to just that area. You have to be multifaceted. You know, you have to be, be engaged and involved in, in a different in different areas. And um, I think if you do that, you know, <laughs> you're good. You're golden. Like if you got multiple, like you cannot live in today's society off of just one. Even the regular nine to five person right now, you cannot live off of just your nine to five. You cannot. Not, I mean, you might you, you you might be able to, but at the end of the day, you, you don't know when that rug is going to get pulled from under. Nah, man, with with the way taxes is going on and the way the way like the way of life is, is you know, you ain't going to be able to do it and, and feel and, and and build wealth. I should say, right? You know, well, you can unless do you got it. like a high power, high power job, man. And even some of these high power jobs is not even guaranteed, man. They pull the rug, like you said, they pull the rug from you, and then what? What you got? Yeah, you living off of your four hundred one k. Good luck. <laughs> Listen, and, it, and there's some things happening in the news when, when, it, when, it, when they're starting to talk about you know they're gonna slow up people's social security. That's a whole other ball game. I don't even want to get into that. Listen, <laughs> you can't. But that's but that's part of the reason why we're trying to tell folks, and we've been telling folks. Um, if you're a producer, we've been telling you, hey, you need to get featured artist credit. Hey, if you're an independent artist, you you have you have to start. Uh, making sure that you're doing more and making sure that you're trying to get your customer data. We've been telling everybody how to get themselves positioned themselves. 
right? We've been telling them to set up their websites. We've been telling folks to make sure that you have things available, make sure that there's a central location that you own. We've been saying this yeah. for, 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 the, the, for the last year. We've been telling folks that you need to have these things in place and need to really work this thing as a legitimate business and stop, and stop thinking of it as just a, I just make songs, or I just, I just write, I just produce. Like, it's bigger than that. I mean, if for those that that want to do it like that, then you know that's have, that's, what have, have at if that's what you want to do. Then you know, but for the people who are serious about this, who wanna who wanna uh, create a business and have some longevity in this, a career, want to be able to, to to hand something down to their children, their family, for the next generation, and create wealth. You got to treat this thing as a business. Bottom line, you treat it anything else, anything less, it dead in the water. So take these tips, man, and, and, and use it as, as as you may. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. You can't, but you can't, you know, you can't just live off of off, off of one one income, and, and if if expect to build any type of wealth, the streaming companies, man, keep telling folks about these streaming companies. It's like these streaming companies. They made these They're, deals. They made, they made these the backdoor deals, deals yeah. with the record company. Um, you weren't at the table. You weren't sitting at it. You weren't as an artist, as a as a songwriter. We were not included in these negotiations. So why would you think they are going to negotiate something fair for you? They're not. You weren't even you weren't even called to the negotiation to the meeting. And why well, would you be? Because they own your masters. Well, there you go. You're not even. You're not even. You're not even like a thought. You didn't get a. You didn't get a piece of mail or email. Hey, you know, we're going to be negotiating this. You know, we would like your input. No. A, a vote. <laughs> a vote. Your a feedback. Vote. Vote. Nope. Vote on what. Vote on what. You know. Vote on what that's going to look like. Like you we're don't gonna, we have any, these three you, situations. You get, vote which one's going to work best for you. You don't, you don't even any, get that. You start streaming and then you get what you get, and then on, and then on top of that, on top of that, you don't even know if you're getting even that. You don't. You would have to do some serious auditing to find out if you even get it. There's that. no way to audit that. Good luck. There's no way to audit it. Like you know, Good luck. like. There's no way to audit that. We don't know what that situation is looking like in terms of how many people are, how much people are really streaming. Yeah. And that's a can of worms that no one wants to talk Yo, about or open. I, I remember one of our, our, our deals that we were kind of going back and forth with one of the companies. And um, we asked we asked them, okay, we need you to send us, you know, and these are little lawyers. We need you to send us, you know, what you guys have been um What's your streams? What's your streams? In the last 10 years. Yo. It's not even, yo. it's not. It's, <laughs> yo. <laughs> and I, I, yo, yo. So, so they said, okay, we're going we gonna to get that information for you. We're going to send you how much the, that song has been streaming for and on all the platforms. And this is, this is a record company. We're going gonna to give you all that information. Jug, when they sent it, yo, when they sent us that information, they sent it to us on an Excel spreadsheet. That could be edited, that anybody at a desk could just put type in. I'm looking at this shit, Jug. Looking at this, and I'm just like, "Yo, I could go in there and just just change the numbers." Like, 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 are you serious? I, I, we should take this as for what it is. Like, this, the, this is the truth. So, and then this is what you gotta take, and, and then that's it. I, I, you know, I, I forget about that. That. <laughs> That interaction, like you know, it was I was tight. It was so <laughs> crazy because you could you could instantly go on uh, the streaming platform and you could see the number for yourself. Yeah, you could see that number, right? And then you go and you look could it see up. that number, and then the number that's coming from the record company on the spreadsheet. Like this, it, some it wasn't here. anywhere close. Yeah, so who was right? So, listen, because like we said before. If we're trying to tell you to tell us what you owe us, you're not going to tell us that you owe us a million. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're gonna say you're gonna say it's a hundred thousand because yeah. you control the output. So it's like this is the game, folks. And I want folks to I hope folks are really paying attention to what we what we're dropping in these these podcasts. Because if people really understood what's going on, then they, they wouldn't they, they would they would really, like you said, reclassify their minds. Start dealing like them like their businesses. Start dealing with yourself differently. Uh, start dealing with your attorneys differently. I, I hate to say that, but the reality that's the reality of the situation. Your attorney is only as good as what you know about this music business. If you don't know anything about this music business, I'm afraid to tell you you're going to have you're going to get a bad deal nine out of ten times. You can't you can't and, and you know in changing a classification, man, you know you have to in your mind say I'm a business owner. Yeah. And as a business owner, you gotta take some time to study the business. You have to, you know, get whatever books you gotta get, you know, um, you know, listen to whatever podcast you need to listen to. You gotta get the right information, you know, and, and you're only gonna be able to move forward and be successful if you're getting if you're making good decisions. In order to make good decisions, you normally base that on good information. Sure. If you don't have good information you're gonna have bad, make bad decisions, and that's just general in life. Period. Not just in business. Everywhere, you have bad information, and you're basing your choices and decisions on the information you have. You're gonna make you're gonna make the wrong move. And and people have to realize too that there is a concerted campaign to give you bad information. Right. Like there is, there are bad actors out here whose sole purpose is to mislead people. Right. And people make people are able to exploit you when you're misled. Like there are some cases, even in our own comment section, I have to correct people and say, hey, stop misleading people. Your yeah. comment is misleading. Don't come into the comments and mislead people and say and say things like that. I think I had made a comment with regards to that Quentin Miller situation that you and I talked about, and someone was saying, Hey. You know, it's 2023. People are not being robbed of their music publishing. And I said, man, don't tell people that. People lose their people losing their rights to their music every single day. And it's either yeah. between either between somebody taking it from them, somebody doing it inadvertently. People don't have an advocate in the room. There are so many instances where you cannot get credited and you can lose the rights to your music. And it happens all the time. Stop telling people that it doesn't happen. It does. So, you know, and I think I think what happens in these type of situations is like, stop telling people that because you got a lawyer, you, 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 your deal can't be bad. That's a lie. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that's so far from the truth. That's a lie. Because you got an attorney does not mean that your deal is going to be good. Right. Your attorney is only there to translate what you know about the business into that contract. If you don't know anything about that, it's not it's it's not up to him to to tell you how to run your business. It's it's up to you to tell you how you run your business. You know, I watched another podcast the other day by uh, Patrick Ben Davis the other day, and he was talking about how he had a bunch of deals that were almost destroyed by the attorneys, and he basically was saying, "Hey, he had an attorney that was a pit bull attorney, and it was going against another attorney, and this is a multi million dollar deal." And every time and every two weeks he had to go back in and tell his attorney to kind of to tone it down because every time the attorney got into the other attorney, they they almost pulled the deal off the table. So this is a key example of if if him as a business owner don't get involved and don't tell the people that work for him what to do, yeah, you're gonna be the loser. Right. It's your deal. It's your deal. So in these situations where we're talking about dealing with streaming and all these type of type of situations. Okay, understand what that business is, and then you have to make the decision on how it's going to impact your business. You have to make the decisions on how you can earn from these situations. Okay, how can I exploit this? Okay, this is what Spotify is paying me. How can I use Spotify as the mechanism to raise my brand awareness and then sell something else at, at a higher value? Right. Exactly. Like this is this is the game that we have to play. People can't you just can't get into the situation that I'm just gonna be doing this thing and hope that I'm gonna live off the streaming indefinitely. That ain't it. That's not the model. And I have to tell a lot of artists that this is not the model anymore. 
that that's not the model where you think you can just live off of the, you know, the radio play and stuff like that. Like for the artists that were living off of the, the legacy radio play and all those things from those old hit records, you know, that model is changing. Now for some, they may continue to earn off of streaming, but not no, not nearly as what they were earning when they were getting to rest of your radio. Right. Right. So this is, this is, this is a different type of playing field. So, you have to start opening yourself up, start offering more. Even as producers, we're in the game where it's like, okay, we're doing sample packs, we're doing drum kits, we're doing this. We're do, you know, there are so many different lanes that you can be into. Right. You just can't relegate yourself to one lane and just running yeah. around chasing artists. Can't do that anymore. And then what we, we, we did the clip in the beginning, the reason why he didn't get the money like he was supposed to get is because he didn't own it, and he didn't. He wasn't the one controlling the output. What if he was able to have negotiated a part of that song and say, "Hey, can I get my can I get a feature credit or can I put something on that record?" Right. That then that that then I can release for myself, or, right? Or get a version that I could release for myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Then that creates a situation where now you can use your art and you can earn. He could have gotten more money for his own situation. Even if his name was a feature, it would have created such a brand awareness for him that he could have went and sold something else. Right. Or created a new situation for himself. You know, it's it's about it's about your brand. And it's not just about the music alone. I think we need to start thinking about this is not just the music business, this is the brand business. Because your music is supposed to sell your brand, you know. The music business in itself by itself is only going to get you so far. So use the music to sell your brand and your brand, everything underneath your brand, whether it's clothing, whether it's a uh, service, whether it's a uh, uh, beverage, whatever it is, you know, you got to use your brand. Your brand is, is everything and you got to protect it at all costs, promote it at all costs and do everything for the brand. Your music is just the avenue of of getting your brand to to the ears of people all over the globe. That's real, man. That that's 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 right there is the mic drop. <laughs> like I don't got anything to say behind that. Like that's really what it is. That's what it's come down to. And I think yeah, the, I think the earlier that artists understand that, the better that it'll be. I and, I, I yeah I'll put it I'll put it i put it as plain and simple as this. Okay. Let's say you have a, a, a t-shirt line, right? A dope t-shirt line on your website, right? And it's, it's, it, it reflects your brand. It, 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 it says different things or quotes or whatever the case may be, or different characters or whatever. And the record that you're part of, uh, or the record you put out, or the record that you're, you're branded as, it's a hit. And your brand name is all over the song, you know. All of those people that heard your record or heard your brand or your name, they now they're gonna check you out, they're gonna go to your site. And now you have millions of people checking out your clothing line. Because you branded yourself or you, you put yourself in, in a situation where when a million people hear, hear this record, they're gonna know my brand. They're gonna know my website. So now when they go to the website, you got a million people automatically. Like it create it created leads actually. That's what it did. Yeah. That's really what it turns into. But if people have to realize that it's like don't just leave them at the door with the consumption of just a stream. Yeah. The stream is only the beginning. It's like that's the only that's the beginning. It was like the streaming of the music is only the beginning. Like, you know, like now can I get you to buy some merch? Now can I get you to see some shows? Now sure. can I get you to see you know, some brand deals. Now can I get you to see some other, you know, commercial uh yeah. co op co- collaborators. Sponsorships. Like, there's so yeah, many there's, there's, there's so many everything. ways to go. So so I don't think I don't think that you're giving you're doing yourself a, a, a good service if you're just relegating yourself to streaming income. I think that's the worst. One is the lowest model. Right. And and, and two is unsustainable and unpredictable because you're at the mercy of the algorithms. You're mm-hmm. at the, the mercy of suppression. And, and, and then we and talked it, about it on the last podcast also, that the also the, the, the major labels have equity share. So their music is, is going to be uh, prioritized right. over everybody else's. 
And the worst part is that you don't get to know who your fans are. That's even worse. No customer data. There's no customer data. I saw I saw a clip the other day where someone said customer data is called the new gold. Yeah, it is. It and is. the reason why customer data is called the new gold is because customer data basically contains the information of predictors. Mm-hmm. You know what you're going to buy, when you're going to buy, how you're going to buy. You it's, a, it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a an advertiser's dream. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you, and if you can form a relationship with those customers, we could ask them, you know, for feedback and what do you think about the last product I gave you? You know, or did you like it? What could I change? You have people giving you ideas for free. You have people who like you, like what you're doing, and say, "Hey, why don't you do this? I'll buy it. Why don't you just add this to it?" Yeah. I, I, and it, you, and you, you kind of start having people that kind of work with you t- to help you get more get consumers, more. and you build a community around that. Where you start, you just get listen. You just gave people like <laughs> ultimate free game, like like they don't realize the power of feedback. Feedback, like, man. Like that, the power of having that feedback loop. The power of having people in your circle. Or your consumer base being right. able to give you real time feedback. They said that's basically what Kanye West was doing when he was doing the Donda album, and he was going and he was previewing it everywhere. He was yeah. basically getting live feedback and then tweaking the album. Tweaking, yeah. Don't get so don't get so big on your art that that you can't accept some feedback and some criticism and some you know like of course yeah some people troll yeah you got to be able to to maneuver through that but yeah you know when you have a customer man you got to. I think they need to res- respect the customer, respect your customer, especially if they contributed to your your wealth. They they purchased your product. Like I, I want to hear what you got to say. You know it's it's important. That's the re- that's the realest part of it all, man. I think I think that's the thing that everybody has to pay attention to, and really making sure that they're paying attention to those fans and so forth and so on. So if we had to recap this episode. And how the streaming companies are ripping people off and the tips that we're telling folks to make sure that they're able to navigate this thing. We're telling them to basically reclassify your mindset mm-hmm. and making sure that you're treating yourself not just as an artist or a producer, that you're thinking about yourself as a business first. Mm-hmm. Right? You're a business that you're in the business of making music, quote unquote, songs, so forth and so on. So you're in the business of. Right. And then you have to start thinking of all the ways that you can basically exploit or use your music to leverage into different avenues so that you can create multiple streams for yourself right. and live Treating off of your art. Treating your, your product as an asset, your, your music as an asset. And also we did talk about that, but your music is an asset class. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone's going to say that to you. Yeah, that's true. No one is going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that your music is an asset class. They're going to tell you that your music is just something that can be consumed at a holiday party and that yeah. we can go drink Hennessy too and get drunk and go have a bunch of kids. Well, They're not going to tell you that it's an asset class, that if it has a record of revenue streaming or a record of revenue earning, that you can take it and you can leverage it into borrowing and doing all types of things because, again, it's an asset class. But that's what they do with stock and crypto. They, 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 they have a campaign that they bombard you on lowering their value, lowering their value, making you feel that it's lowering. And when you, you get scared and you sell it for cheap, here the big dogs come here and they buy it all up. They do it in stock. They do it in crypto. That's how it works. And that's how they're doing it in music. You you see what you just said? <laughs> like What you just said is that that's the campaign where they yeah. go through the, the conscious effort of devaluing an asset class. They scare you out of it. They make you give it up for nothing. And then you then they well, then once you're saying, hey, you don't want it anymore, it's not worth anything because they convince you that it's not worth anything. Here they come to buy it all up. Yes. Man, that's that that was like bars right there, bro. Like if, <laughs> if, if, if people understood that, like that's what it is. That's that's the bars right there. But it's the Architect Beast music business podcast, folks. You know, we 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 are <laughs> Yeah, check us out. Architectbeast.com. 
If you have not already downloaded your copy of the ebook, The Songwriter's Guide to Song Registration, it's the essential steps to protect and monetize your music. If you don't have that, I don't know what to tell you. It's free game. We're giving it away for free so that you can just kind of get a basic understanding of the first steps on how to set yourself up for some success. Yeah. Like, treat, treat yourself as a business. Man. Treat yourself as a business. And that's what that book really tells you to do is to treat yourself as a business, to set up your LLC, to set up your copyrights, to have all your things protected, to set up all of your publishing entities so that you can start to take your catalog, put it as part of your business, and start to move forward with it. So these are the things that you have to make sure that you're doing. So if you haven't already gotten your copy, I'm gonna leave. we're going to leave the link in the bio, in the description rather, excuse me, and you should be able to go look for that and get that and download that. And also, if you have any questions, yeah, right, hit, us up. hit us up. Also, what's coming back is professional music reviews. We're going to give music. We're doing back professional music reviews. That's going to be coming for next month. Yep. We're, also, we're also coming back with our uh, Spotify playlist for mm-hmm. emerging artists that we have our fingers on and that we're working with. So all of these things are coming back for folks, you know, it's to help you move forward. So. You know, make sure you're hitting us up and staying with us and connected. Yeah, if you have the, the website, architectbeats.com. Mm-hmm. And until next week, y'all. Peace. Peace.